Yeah. So um, just by way of background, the CJAC, the Social Economic Justice Advisory Committee, um, started in 2018, which is when Michael joined. I joined in 2019. Um, and kind of with two main competing priorities, um, one to assist the city council um, in addressing and reshaping the systems, policies, and practices that perpetuate barriers to racial, social, and economic justice, and to push those, pro- you know, push priorities forward. And so in 20, early 2020, started the process in 2019, we, um, well, first of all, we, we have been a much, much bigger committee historically. Um, you know, I think, you know, when we got, when Michael and I first joined, it was a huge, you know, full, a full capacity committee and, um, yeah, with lots and lots of members and the membership has really changed over the years and has been pretty small for the past year, I would say. Um, so yeah, in like 2020, we signed, we, we did an RFP and got a contract with, um, creative discourse, which is, um, Sue McCormick and Keisha realms group, um, based out of Burlington, um, for kind of an initial plan of like a two-year process to like create an equity plan for this city with like all of these different processes for like focus groups and community dialogue and engagement and surveys and things and kind of like an iterative process. Um, so we kind of like signed the contract, then the pandemic hit and got our funding with pulled and like all of these other things. And then with, um, with, uh, George Floyd, um, and kind of the racial reckoning summer got the funding reinstated, kind of got a renewed interest in doing this work. We're able to fulfill the contract and be able to, um, kind of re- really do work on, do this report and be able to engage about 50 residents and focus groups and then others and kind of surveys and other and other things to and then also to partner up with the newly created Montpelier Police Advisory Council to um, have some recommendations coming out of that and then the Montpelier Police Advisory Council um, I think that's what it's called right um, took those and um, like you know kind of th- that was like a, a time bound kind of you know committee and so that they, they kind of worked on those priorities and then closed shop. Um, and Michael was also on that committee and so was able to be kind of the liaison between the two. Um, and then one of the other big priorities coming out of that was the homelessness task force. Um, and so that kind of created uh, a project um, uh, that uh, like a, a task with a task force, you know, not a committee, but like focused on this thing that is continuing to meet um, at 11 o'clock on Thursdays, I think. So it's a time that I can never, ever make. Um, but, uh, and none of us are officially on that. Um, but that's kind of another like spin, I would say like a spin off of like CJAC kind of thing. Um, and so over the past year, as I said, things have really, really slowed down. I think we've really been trying to find our, our footing and figure out what the next, you know, projects that we want to push forward or, you know, if we should, you know, what is our role in the city, um, kind of as being like a platform to be able to do research and ask, answer questions for the city council. But um, when there aren't pending projects or priorities, it's like, you know, what are we working on? And so last year we really, we, we got a, a stipend project off the ground. So all city committee members can, um, you know, not without any needs testing or anything like that can get $50 a meeting just to participate in, um, you know, in city committees. Um, and have been working with Kelly to see if we can expand that to participating in public hearings or, or other, um, you know, using those funds in other spaces because they haven't been used in the way that we had budgeted um, and have a significant lower budget this year. Um, and um, and then also, yeah, we'll talk a little bit more later in the meeting about um, the what we have been asked to support is the... Um, um, the country club that you're not supposed to call it the country club anymore. Um, I can't remember what's called 279 country club lane project. And then also, um, working on kind of looking at holidays was kind of another reactive, um, smaller project that I was actually going to wrap up, but then found that really great article that I shared yesterday. And so if there is more to talk about there, how do I do Michael any, or, and any questions, Caitlin or Evelyn? Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, I probably do have questions, but they'll probably come up more as we just talk about what's happening. I came in with a couple of questions, so I don't know if that's, this is a good time to ask those or, um, yeah, I missed what our role is in the 279 Country Club Road project. 
Um, and then I was also wondering, uh, I saw somewhere, I think on something that you sent that maybe, or Michael sent me a bunch of like oh. old meeting notes. Um, and I was just noticing that there is not a DEI city, city statement, which was surprising to me, very surprising. Um, and I'm wondering maybe why, and if we, that might be a priority maybe. Um, also wondering about those trainings that were mentioned, the DEI trainings that were mentioned. Um, and I would be curious about the Montpelier Police Advisory Council, maybe like what came out of that exactly. But that's maybe something that could just like be sent to me or I could just look up somewhere. Mm -hmm. So I think those are my questions for now. Well, yes, you, there is a, a long report from the Police Review Committee, and uh, it's really too long to summarize in a few words here. And so I would suggest that you go to the city website uh, the, and you'll find if you can't if you can't find it, let me know and I'll send you um, a link that I that I have somewhere. Okay. Great. Um, the DEI we do we did sign on to the Declaration of Inclusion, which was a statewide which is a statewide project, uh, and the council did approve our version of it. So um, that's that's what we've done. And I think the rest of it is you're right. It, we. And and I've been pondering this, you know, sort of, does this mean that we sort of come to our end of our rope or is it that we mean that we've been very successful because everything that we suggested, we suggest has somehow gotten through the city council and been implemented. So, um, you know, I'm starting to think that one of our jobs is to sort of, one of our jobs is to identify um, pro problems or issues propose suggestions and step back and let the city council you know do what it's supposed to do because we are only an advisory committee and it's in our name right. so um i think that's a i think we still we still have some function um and as kind of watchdog um and and a place where you know we can at least make some suggestions about what the city council might do to address some of those yeah, and I can comment. Okay. I was just going to say, I can comment on the um, the Country Club Road um, involvement. So I have been involved in that project pretty heavily for the last year, mainly because it has been such a massive public engagement process um, that was going into the, uh, to the creation of the master plan. Um, and so we, <laughs> um, we worked with CJAC quite a bit um, from the uh, basically from using that advisory capacity um, as, as a, so my communications background touches on a lot of the same tenants as um, that the, like that this committee is um, is working towards. And so we were coordinating as much as possible to make sure that our communications efforts and our public engagement process was as uh, as equitable and uh, as inclusive of all the different, um, the, the different populations and stakeholder groups. So it, that was really helpful for for that process, just to kind of be like a sounding board to say this is you know this is our our ideas. What are your thoughts on that? And like from your perspective, how can we adapt and, and change to meet um, the needs that we just might not be aware of? Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. And to answer a couple of other questions that I heard um, for like staff training. Um, CJAC has not been engaged in that beyond supporting the city and like you know, who, who should, you know, who are potential people who they can hire and things like that. Um, we've also gotten approached several times over the, you know, like just constant, I feel like it's like once a month, <laughs> like several times, way more than several times from like other city committees or like partners with cities and, you know, just various people saying like, can you, can you do a DEI training? And we've just been really, really clear that that is not our role, um, that there are lots of other professionals who do that work and that there's lots of expertise that goes into that and that every committee is very, like every every group is very different and has different needs for doing that. And so of kind of developing um, a lot of different resources and can support people in trying to figure out like, what are they looking for in uh, kind of like DEI training? Um, but that that is not, you know, that is not our role in, in the city. Um, and then, for 
uh, Michael, you've, you've been on, you've been on this for a while. Is that like, perhaps the city should hire someone. And that's been just kind of like something also on our back, you know, the back burner, um, for us. Um, and, and that there hasn't been a budget or a, you know, priority to be able to do that, like hire a full-time or a part-time person to really, um, drive all of the, these priorities for the city. Um, but that is something that has also, um, been discussed. I think, so I think Shane also you um you didn't you didn't include the 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 toolkit for equity okay. in, yep. in in city council policy and budgeting um that that was a major effort I think yeah we definitely have lots of other efforts through the years too of like writing reports on um you know fair how fair hiring practices on um, you know, and like uh, other like more kind of one-off projects to respond to the city. And then this one has been, was, became a much bigger one. That was a request for how can we do equitable budgeting and like participatory budgeting um, and came up with this um, tool that we use like pretty ex heavily, but mostly of just like, what are the questions that we should be asking? Who are, who are the, you know, people who should be engaged in these processes and be, um, yeah, be, in, be engaged in, in budgeting and things like that. So I can share that too. Be, or that is also linked on CFAC's website. Yeah. I think that helps. I have a clearer picture of what we're doing now. So thank <laughs> you all. Thanks for those questions. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, so we've been working on recruitment for this committee for probably about a year, but not super, super heavily because of some of these questions about like, what does um, you know, what is our role and where are we, where are we going from there? And so, um, we now have, yeah, I guess three, uh, volunteer members. And so is there anyone else who just wanting to check in on recruitment and membership? Um, if there was anyone else that we should invite in, I know I had a couple of, uh, folks who were pending and as of like two weeks ago, I think they've all said no. So other priority. It's like been hard. I don't know. It's been a hard time for like volunteer engagement in general. Mm -hmm. I think like I know I've been dropping the ball all over the place. It's like and yeah, in my experience, I so I also I've worked on a couple school board committees too, and um, it seems like the people who would be great at this are the people who are um, disenchanted by these processes honestly. Yeah. So I think that's really the hardest part about recruiting. Mm -hmm. And, or are engaged in other pathways of change, which are so important. And yeah. Yeah. yeah and no. it's not just this committee too. I've been working um, with several committees who are like down to the wire on, uh, on participation. So yeah, it's been, it's not definitely not just this committee. It's kind of like, we're seeing it everywhere. Yeah, totally. And I will say the stipend helps, especially for a full-time student. <laughs> I imagine, yeah. Well, um, I can report on the two interviews I had. Um, one said no, and the other one never responded. So there we go. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much a no. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I'm just trying to think of everyone in my head who would who I would ask, and I know they would all probably say no, unfortunately. And one of the things we heard from the the report that, that the consultants we had is that the, the folks in minority groups who 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 speak up are are exhausted because there are a few of them who are asked to serve on every you know every possible committee. Yeah. And so they uh, we you know they're they're starting to say you know no I can't take on any more or I'm tired of this. Um, so. Yeah, ideally this panel would not be all white people for sure. Right, and we've tried, um, but we haven't had much success with that, with, with recruiting someone from, you know, from the BIPOC group. Oh, I just thought of someone. And yeah, and I think, and I think right as, you know, it's like in an ideal world, this would not be a committee run and inclusive of white people. And it's, um, up, it's like up to us to, as a you know ma white majority in the city to like do the work and to um be be driving this work forward and um because it is just wearing on particularly more wearing on on people of color so <clears throat> um don't mind if I write down those names though what 
Can I fill my coffee really fast? That's a great idea. I'm going to, too. I've got this like tickle in my throat. So I'm going <laughs> to. Hello. Um, all the, all the, the public meetings are over for the, that, the Elks Club or whatever. Property. What's the next, what's the next step with that? Yeah. So the, so the, the initial phase one, which was like the, the heavy public engagement part building up to the master plan has, has just about concluded. So next week at the council meeting, our project team will be presenting uh, the actionable master plan and asking the city council to adopt it. And then, so from that point, the, the project will transition from phase one to phase two, which will actually go about developing a, pl a plan of how to use that property based on the recommendations laid out in the actionable, ma actionable, actionable master plan. Mm -hmm. Yes. Is there a timeline for the council to make some decisions on that, or um, is it just, or are they going to have to establish their own timeline? So we, so for the adoption of the actual actionable master plan, we're going to ask for a vote um, on on the actual in the council meeting. But then the 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 phase two will take likely several several years because it's going to be engaging with um, potential developers, <laughs> figuring out how the um, you know, what's going to be built in the community and recreation zone, that's also a, a parallel public process that we're going through right now, is identifying the needs, the, the recreation and community needs, and then figuring out like what, what tangible steps do we need to, um, do we need to act on in order to make that happen? And so that's what the actionable master plan is going to lay out. And it's going to basically say here, based on the, the feedback from the, from the public feedback from the council, this is what we've come up with, and then it'll just be putting those steps into into order in, in phase two. So yeah, it's gonna this next stage is gonna be a, a very long haul. When do you anticipate like CJAC's role escalating again in in that process? Like knowing like it's going to city now, but then this can be years of engagement. When will that engagement like start ramping up? And like yes, yeah, so when should we plan exactly. on? Yeah, so we're, we're gonna we're hoping to to keep moving forward with the recreation and community zone planning this summer. So you'll definitely be hearing from us again um, over the summer, and then that will like right now it's just kind of we're we're doing like the analysis of the site, we're doing like data analysis of the usage and etc. Mm -hmm. like that. Um, so that's kind of all the, the behind the scenes um, work that'll be done in order to um, then we'll be able to take that information to the public and again. And so, yes, you, you will be hearing from us again um, over the summer as that cooks along. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, bunch of other city questions of um, over like for several months now, we've been, um, you know, we worked on, on getting a city committee application update to make that mm -hmm. application for participating in city committees more equitable. Um, and then I think like one change was made and then it's been a big pause. And so I didn't know if you had any update or if that was still on Kelly, I feel like it keeps almost being done and then nothing's happened. So yeah, I, I don't, but I will ask her and we can figure that out. Yeah. And then um, I know Carol, it looks like Carol is at this meeting and she's not on, but um, for stipends and budget updates, so it looks like the stipend budget got cut really, really significantly, but also I know that we haven't been spending that budget at all yet. And um, for our budget, because we haven't done a, another round of you know hiring for consultants that also has been held. Um, and so, yeah, if just is, is, there, is there more that we should know on any of those? I will ask the, that as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, were you at those meetings or do you know anything too? I was not. No. Okay. So I just took a bite. Here we go. <laughs> okay. So then our priorities right now, um, um, we kind of have two main ones and then one that I saw in our June kind of our strategic plan. Um, but so first of all, it's the city celebrations and recognitions project. Um, <clears throat> so this is not really like a project project. I feel like I've had a lot of complicated feelings about this because we want to make sure that. Um, so the, the question um, that got posed to us was, you know, how come the city celebrates, you know, St. Patrick's Day and kind of all of the federal cr white Christian holidays, um, but not like uh, not a lot of other holidays that are on the calendar. And I think there are 
you know, the response has been like that. This is more, you know, kind of a, <clears throat> you know, with a lot of different like iterations of what this could look like, you know, like, do we want to do a report of what the city has celebrated in the past? Do we want to do more like education, like, like just like lots of different ideas on like what this engagement could look like. And um, I think we're kind of where the next step of this is at for your, the city is more engaging in communications and being really intentional and mindful about um, where we're, sorry, this is not not my house and there's a landline and I'm just not gonna let it ring out. I'm so sorry. <laughs> um, but, and then it's probably gonna go on this on the speaker for the um, thing. Um, but I've been doing an employment employee engagement survey. And so Evelyn, I don't know if you know anything about that too, or, um, yeah, or, and any communications update about like holidays and recognitions. Yeah. So I, I don't have any info on the holidays or recognitions, but I can, I will ask that uh, to Kelly as well. Um, but as far, as far as communications, um, is going, um, we, so I've been working with a, a few different committees of putting together, um, handouts, like, like trifold handout pamphlet. Um, and to just have as like a tangible document for each committee that kind of just runs through the basics of like who we are, what do we do, what's our mission to increase, um, to have something that we can like, you know, to put around the city or on bulletin boards or send out in like school newsletters or things like that. Um, so if this, if this group would be, would be interested, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to work with you all to, to put together something like that. So not even for that quite yet, but um for like yeah, I think there was like recognition of like posting on social media um of of you know making sure that there's like lots of different holidays. And I think the um blog post that I shared yesterday had a link in it to a calendar of just like not every holiday, but quite a few holidays and like celebrations and like days of um recognition in there yeah. too. And so is yeah, just like is there a kind of communication, social media recognition plan being made too? Or? Yes, that, so the, having having that um, laid out, spelled out with all the, the different um, uh, calendar days of, of, of recognition, that would be super helpful for me because I am working on putting together a, communication, a strategic communications plan that would outline basically everything that I do in my job to that like very fine detail of, you know, when do we post on social media? How do we post on social media? Like what language are we using to post on social media? Um, and so like a calendar of days, it would be, um, would be like a wonderful addition, I think, uh, to that plan. And this is, again, it's like, it, it, the strategic plan is, is going to take, uh, you know, several months to include, but that's okay because that's, you know, it's, that's just the nature of the work is we're, we're building um, on something that didn't exist before. Um, because this communication is, or this position is so new. I would think that's a place that CJAC could be supportive as we're reviewing that. So, sorry, Michael, go Absolutely. ahead. That's okay. Um, I, <laughs> went, I went online and I found three, there are a whole bunch of sources on national holiday recognition celebrations. And I found three, I thought, I wasn't sure if I had sent it around to the committee, um, but I can do that. Um, and include you, Evelyn, in that. Yeah, that'd be great. Uh, and, and, you know, it, it is true that just about every month has something. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and, the, and, that, and the question really is, um, which of those some things does the city actually recognize in, in, yeah. uh, in other ways than just having, giving city employees a day off? Uh, exactly. Uh, and, and what does recognition mean, really? Mm -hmm. The uh, and I, I said this with some caution, but I'll say it anyway. The, the issue about the St. Patrick's Day, that was not really an official, you know, it wasn't any official recognition. It was the uh, the building, uh, the which not buildings and grounds. What do we call it? Public Department of Public Works had a lunch mm -hmm. at their at their garage, and they invited city council members and stuff like and stuff like that. Um, so I don't, and and I understand I understand that it was a sensitive issue, uh, nonetheless, because they were city workers, but that that was not a city a city recognition. It was one, you know, one department holding a um, 
a, a kind of cele internal celebration. Um, and, I, and I really don't mean to dismiss that because I think, um, you know, the question was, well, why did that, why did it go out just to city council members and why that day and things like that? So um, I think there's, there's a, a problem about what we mean by a recognition and, and a celebration that needs to be defined pretty clearly if we're going to, as, as we move forward here. I think uh, Juneteenth is a perfect example of something that could be worked on because mm -hmm. although it is now recognized as a holiday, it, the, there's no education really around like what that is. And I think particularly in a state that is this white, there might need to be some sort of just um, acknowledging what it is type of thing. So it's not just like, great, a new day off, but I would love to see something like that. It's, the city doesn't get it off too, even though it is a federal holiday. Yeah. Um, yeah. And just like that, you know, we want to make sure that everyone feels welcome to set, like to publicly celebrate their cultural holidays and in a predominantly white city and a predominantly white staff that's going to mean some holidays are more feel more welcome to be celebrated than others and want to make sure that it's not like appropriating other holidays like the city is not appropriating other holidays and recognizing and like doing a celebration without people from that community being centered in the decision making around that celebration and that process so yes it's <laughs> This is why we, <laughs> I just feel, I have so many conflicting feelings about this project and of like, great, it was like raised as like, this is a question and like, this with a lot of curiosity. And I think um, I've been really trying to still, yeah, struggling on figuring out what that means. I also, one of my to-dos coming out of our last meeting was to reach out to GAIR, the government alliance on racial equity or something like that. And I reached out twice and haven't heard anything back. And so, um, but they're run by, um, a broader organization, I think Color Alliance is what it's called or something like that. Um, and so, but yeah, they don't have any materials on their website about holidays and celebrations. And um, when I reached out, I yeah didn't hear back. So, so that's kind of why we've been more focused on communications planning and strategic communications. Um, and so it seems like that'd be a great partnership here, Evelyn. Um, yeah, is there anything else that we can do to celebrate the communications piece? And then is there anything else that we want to prioritize for city celebrations and recognitions? <clears throat> yeah, one of the things kind of on my back burner, the back burner, uh, just because I haven't had time to work on it is, and this, so the city, oh, oh, a few years ago, the city did a uh, survey, basically asking people how they get their information and, um, you know, what channels do they, do they prefer to get their information? Um, and so kind of revisiting that since it, our technology and communications change so frequently, um, revisiting that is something that I, I would be interested in as well, just to make sure that our communication is effective. Um, because it's, you know, it, it's all well and good to have stuff on a website, but if people don't visit the website regularly, they're not going to know where, you know, how to get it. Um, so kind of like in, even just gathering anecdotal information at this point would be helpful, but that we, you know, we, we could also look into to doing a, another smaller survey because we do have a, right now our, our contract still includes the Polco platform that, that you might've been um, seeing as different surveys come and go like we used it for country club road uh several times um so in the the, the big <clears throat> push that i'm working on right now is to is and you'll see this in uh, today's uh, edition of the a message in montpelier in the article in the bridge is basically all about making sure that we are living up to our um, commitment to effective communication as outlined in the strategic plan so yeah so that, that could also be something that uh, that this committee uh, works on or consults with yeah. yeah and so are are you looking at doing a polco like survey update or not quite yet that i know it takes um, fun. not quite yet we kind of just, yeah we would like if we if we um kind of move forward more, more a little bit on this and, and realize yes like that would be a great thing to do then then totally cool but yeah. i'm open and to that, other channels like as well or, dovetails really, really nicely with the next point here, which is communicating the city's equity work to the community. And this was something that I, what, you know, had been kind of on our back burner, like, or had been on our strategic plan and then 
um, just got raised up last um, meeting as well. And so I think, yeah, very, very intertwined, but um, yeah, just figuring out how people in the city hear about the city's work and then um, yeah, how, what does that mean for how we celebrate and recognize days and communities? And then also how do we communicate the city's equity work? So um, what is, does anyone have any thoughts on that? That's, I have not planned any report back here. This is kind of an initial conversation. <clears throat> well, we have Tom McComb who is a pe periodically writes a letter, you know, uh, writes an article for the bridge for, about us. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> He's probably the best, the best uh, advertiser we, you know, the best communication source that we have because he's really interested in it. Um, I don't know what what else um, we you you you're thinking about, uh, Shana. I, <clears throat> Are you saying to promote this committee is is what you're saying? Well, I don't think it's promoting. It's just to keep, yeah, to carrying out the city's work. Yeah. Sorry. Right. What are we doing, um, and yeah. what, what's being done in uh, in in the area of social equity? <clears throat> I don't think we want to be we want to be think people thinking that we're promoting our our ourselves, but um, but I think it's important to see you know to get to get the word out that there are people paying attention to it, um, and there are some things that have been done. Much to do, of course, but. <clears throat> Yeah, I think that's a great idea to have this out there. I and mean, it seems like a lot of people just wouldn't know what's what they're doing around this work. So I think letting people know is a great idea. Yeah, and even just like with the stipend, which we'll be talking about more later, it's like we budgeted 30 times more than we've actually spent on that, you know? And so if just like, we could we could be doing a lot more there. Um, well, I, I see that there are signs up at uh, City Hall about it, um, and and as well as recruiting signs on on the front front door of City Hall. Anyway, I haven't gone in the back door recently, but um, so uh, and I, I think that there are other places where. I've seen you know notices that you know vacancies are there are vacancies on on city committees. I haven't seen very much about the stipend part, but and I don't know how that one gets. Well, that's 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 included in the application. Not yet. So that's well, that, can, that, but... that, we were, that we were suggesting. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> So if anybody if anybody is is inter you know gets an app pulls it up an application they they don't already know then they'll find out about the stipend project and I don't know how better how what else we can do on that um, but I mean this. I'm just thinking like more city council engagement around it like posting on front porch forum or I know they I think they have a Facebook page. Um, Things like that. Maybe they have a Twitter account. I don't know. We have put in uh, notices uh, in Front Porch Forum about the stipend program when it was first passed. When it first passed, we did. I don't know if we've done it since then. Yeah, we did some like before, you know, in like <clears throat> in June of last year, I want to say, and then after the July start of the project. Um. But yeah, I don't know. I think it has been several months since we posted anything. And then, yeah, social media, front porch forum, articles written in the bridge and have city council talk about it, you know, have Orca, have it be recorded on Orca. Like, yeah, those types of things. But I think kind of is what we're talking about of like, how do, how do people know about what's happening in the city? Also, like, yeah, are there to use some like crass business words, like thought leaders, like influencers in the community who can like get the word about about it and stuff. Um, I know, right, like we used CAN for a while and I know the city's had this weird, or has like a funky relationship with CAN. I don't know where that stands now, but like, is there more happening with that? Like that was thought to be kind of this place of like, here are the people in these different neighborhoods who can like reach out to their neighbors. 
but yeah, I don't know if there's any on where that stands. Yeah, un unfortunately, <laughs> the leadership of CAN transitioned last fall, and it kind of yeah. made an abrupt halt to that program, which is really unfortunate because that was exactly like we we were hoping that that exactly would serve that purpose, where you'd have people in the community, in like neighbor, like local neighborhoods where people have trusted um, folks to, to deliver and share messages and information. Um, I'm basically what is happening now is, is I'm doing my best to absorb and help create um, those new structures in the meantime. I think just repetitive posting too, like there's so many front porch forums that you get. So mm -hmm. even sending it like once a, twice a month or once a month or just repetitive yeah make a plan for just scheduling emails to send to front porch forum to send out to different places right just like setting it up ahead of time this little communications campaign those are those are actually i, I really enjoy working on those too because those are usually it's they're they're very focused um and it's for a, a specific issue for a specific um T uh, like time timeline and so i think we're talking now about like stipends but right but this could be used for yeah i mean like making a plan and then being able to use that kind of um anyone want to take on communications campaign for stipend outreach because if not i can try to pull something together so you mean we are the ones posting about this Gotcha. Yeah, I that on as our role, but yeah, good, good question. Or is that the city's responsibility, Evelyn? I would say it's both. Um, it, it definitely can be amplified through the city, but it's also great to hear from like from actual like people involved in the committee. And even if it's the same, um, like like a like a copied and paste uh, message that would be tweaked slightly, I think it's it's great to have it come from as many people as possible and organizations as possible. Yeah, I'm happy to to post things like that on like the Facebook Friends of Montpelier Schools pages and events pages and things like that. I just don't want to write it. <laughs> I'd be happy to uh, to help draft yes. some copy. Send me something, and I'm happy to put it on Front Porch Forum and all of the all of the places. We have some draft copy from last year too. Yeah, so that we can work off of. Right. Send that to you, Ellen. Right, I was thinking we were. That's really what we were doing. We were not. <clears throat> we were not rewriting it every time we posted it last year. Yeah, I don't know if anybody kept that. I I did it a few times. I don't remember, and probably did not keep copies for my own use. But we made a plan for outreach. Like, like everyone on the committee, I think. Yeah, there was four or five of us at that point. Like, really, you know, did claim a week and and push it out there. So yeah, I think we did deal. Some good work on that, uh, but didn't see the impact that we thought it would have. And so back to the question about how do people in the city get their communications from the city? <laughs> you know, do we want to run a survey or just ask around and gather anecdotal evidence or what's the next step for that? Right. So for sharing stipends and for just like sharing general other equity stuff, right? Like knowing how people in the city hear about stuff from the city feels important. Yeah, I think it'd be nice to have like a set of five questions or something. And you you could even put that as a survey in the posts that we're posting, <clears throat> looking for people. Because I think it's important to know exactly what we are working on when we're recruiting people and what they know so they can know exactly what if they want to do it or not yeah and so what do we like we want to post it in different places and then to say like what are the sources that you use to get your information and then where do you get information from the city are those kind of like the two major buckets of questions yeah, that's where I would start. And then we could also, like, one of the questions could be um, out of like the using the, the foundation of the channels that we have now, like we can ask which one people use most frequently. Um, and then so we could kind of gauge like, I know, uh, like Facebook was really popular for a while. And now the engagement has dropped off quite precipitously. 
Um, front porch forum is definitely where a lot, like the, a lot of the engagement is, but it, again, it also, it's only reaching people that are on front porch forum and, and as active it is, as it is, there's still a decent chunk of the population that isn't, that isn't using it. So I can work on um, that as well as putting together a few, a few questions and then sending it back to this group for, uh, for feedback and review and editing. Will you just email that or? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, yeah. Is that, and then so posting that around and then seeing what the results are. Yeah. Um, I did find my text for the committee stipends announcements for front porch form. So I can send it off to you, Caitlin. Great. <clears throat> Great. Thank you. Thanks so much. And to Evelyn, you want a copy of it too, or? That, that would be fantastic. Yes, please. Uh, okay. All right. Well, it sounds like yeah, our next steps are that Michael will share the draft copy with Evelyn um, and and Caitlin. Um, Evelyn will pull together some questions, share with this group for feedback. Um, Caitlin will review um, the police advisory and the um, uh, other reports. I'm just like there were more in my notes, but I don't have them here. Um, yeah, and then Evelyn will be asking for updates from Kelly on the city committee application and on the stipend and on the city budget. Anything else? And then we'll all just stay in touch about the Country Club Road. Uh, I think there was something in the notes that I took last time, which laid out some other things that we were supposed to be thinking about. Let me see if I can find that that document um we are we're i are we supposed to be submitting a, a request for continuing the the pilot the, the stipend project to city council pretty soon because there's because they're doing their budget budget planning i think that happened I think that it was we're oh, allocated yeah. five thousand nine hundred dollars for FY twenty four. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think we're. I missed that. All right. When is that? When did the when does the budget happen? Yeah, because I don't think we participated in it. I think that just happened with like Helen and Lauren and like our 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 champ. Yeah. So the big the planning, um, the budget planning and 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 preparing happened last uh, like late fall, early winter, and then it was just approved back in January, and then it went to the to the voters in March. But yeah, you're right, Michael. Yeah. We're going to present to the city council on stipend participation. Well, because we haven't gotten the data from Kelly. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay, next agenda. Stipend. Oopsies. Sorry. And to present... Um, so next meeting, we will do look at stipend participation from Kelly and plan to present to city council. Um, we will talk about communication survey. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, Carol, Carol had made a specific question, a specific re uh, request that, uh, and I put it into the notes as an addition. Carol requested that committee stipend policy language be amended <laughs> to include the CJC volunteers, not the staff, but the volunteers. Um, yeah, uh, we have some other questions on that too, right? And like if she can use it for, or if um, the city can use it for other types of city committee participation, like one-off participation. And so, right, that Kelly was saying right. that needed to go back to city council, but. Right, uh, because we were also trying to see if we could use it to get people to go to the, the hearings on the, El the right. Elks project. Elks yeah. Um, yeah, just one observation that I have made from the uh, CJC restorative justice committee too. Um, I don't know if this is something that I should even like bring to here, but 
um, we need younger people. And by younger, I mean 50 and below on that panel. Um, so having the stipend there might be amazing. We really need to recruit younger people. Um, so I don't know if that's something that we could promote or if that's separate. Can I add that into our agenda for next time for talking about this city recruitment yes. and for CJC? Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, what's this? Oh, one other thing, and that is, um, I, I uh, did attend the um, the the, de the declaration of inclusion celebration. I guess that was that was the last but, time we talked. Was before that happened. Wow, it's been a while. Right, um, and what they're focusing on now is obviously implement. They, they got. They got more. They're way they they're way over their hundred uh, goal for that celebration, <clears throat> but they're still they're still working on other communities. <clears throat> but they wanted they really want to know how we're we're uh, advertising the fact that we have a declaration. We have submitted a declaration of independence or passed a declaration of in the, of, of inclusion, <clears throat> and so that's part of the communications, you know problem i guess you know does anyone know that we that we uh, the city uh, passed that draft um and what does it mean uh, and what 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 else are we going to do about with it what are we going to do with it i guess this is one question so what we make this declaration then right you remind me of when that when that took place um it was in may may 5th may 10th sorry yeah and there were uh, things about what to do about it um mm -hmm. that we just haven't um yeah engaged with that significantly yeah oh my god I guess they were they were hoping that we would uh, a number of, of committees that we, city town committees reported um, you know they've put it in their newspapers they put it at city offices they put it, copies at the library and things like that just post put it up and and um, have it there. Um, I mean, yeah. it's a step. <laughs> yeah. It is. Right. Yeah, but and is there community communications that we can use to get it out there and why, I guess, too, right? If like I think that was always the question is saying we're doing this because we're part of this statewide movement. Now the statewide launch has happened. So now why? Um It also turns out that there are some, the Vermont Community Foundation has opened a new grant category, equity grants for towns to implement equality, um, equality um, programs up to $10,000. So if we, if we have a plan for something, uh, we might con contact the, the, um, the Vermont Community Fund for funding it, funding part of it. I think we got funding from them for a much, much smaller project back in like 2019, 2020 for when we did the RFP, when we were just trying to get some more funds for um, hiring. I can look back at my notes and see if there's not, you know, where that stands, but. Well, I, I'm just thinking if, if there's a. Yeah, if, if there's a project. If there's a project already start, starting up or or in the planning division, this would be a way to, you know, get it, give it a boots, a, 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 a startup fund. And, and I don't know the terms of it. It was just mentioned. I, don't, I assume it's some, some kind of matching grant, but but um, at least get some more some more information about it. And that can be done probably by going to their website. Yeah. Which I did, have not yet done, but 
We can this do piece of paper okay. keeps it periodically rises to the top of my pile and then gets sunk down again. So, you know, it gets covered <laughs> up sure, again. Sure. But, I play that uh, game too. Yeah, right. Ebb tide, is, ebb tide is wonderful. It reveals some of the stuff that's that's going on <laughs> on my desk. Okay. All right. All right, all. Um, I do think I have to hop because I do have another meeting in just a minute here. But our next meeting is trying to find when that is. Uh, mm -hmm. July twenty, July twelfth. If that uh, works for folks this time. Speed? Yes, July twelfth. Yep. Amazing. See you then, and I'll send these out. I'm gonna try like next Friday. Does that make sense? That's good. Okay. Shana, could you send me a copy of your notes yes. so that, that I can fill fill in my blanks in my note taking? Thank you so much for taking notes, Michael. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank See you all. Thank you so much. See you later. Bye. Great to meet you, Caitlin. Me too.